Hey, I just started an Etsy store. It's a place where people sell art. Everything I do on there is handmade. Everything is original, straight from my head. I'm sure y'all will like it. You know, I'm keeping the prices reasonable. I ain't trying to bust nobody head or nothing. So, if y'all can go through and support, appreciate it, man. Thank y'all so much for all the support now. The link to the shop is right down here in the comment box. I'm going to put it right there and pin it right up top. So right where you see the top comment at, click the link to the shop right there. And I'm also got the link down here in the description box under the video. Appreciate y'all, man. Make sure you like the video. Ring the bell. Only 22% of people have uh, rung the bell. Let's show YouTube that we love who for. <laughs> Hey man, I want to thank y'all for the donations. I want to thank y'all for all the likes. If y'all ain't realized, YouTube been pushing the channel harder than it ever pushed the channel. I'm getting 150, 60, 170 subs every four weeks, man. So that's because YouTube see that I'm getting likes. YouTube see that I'm getting comments. So as long as I keep getting likes, keep getting comments, YouTube going to keep pushing. And on this video, only 22% of my followers have rang the bell. Now, we need to show YouTube that y'all want to hear or y'all want to be notified every time I make a video. So, I'm going to need everybody who watching to hit the bell and hit enable all notifications. So, we can let YouTube know that y'all want to hear whatever hood for it got to say, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Love y'all, man. Just wanted to come to y'all and talk to y'all for a minute. Tell y'all about a story I heard. A story is about this guy named the, uh, the organ donor. Now, the organ donor is like an urban legend. And it's uh, come from the projects. Now, a lot of people probably never heard of this because the reason I do hood horror is because there's so many urban legends that come from the streets that people never even heard of before. Now the organ donor is uh, why a lot of black people you'll find is scared to put that they're organ donor on their license. It's even a little conspiracy theory that if you are an organ donor that they'll have you killed if you have matching blood types to somebody that got enough money to get you killed and if you match up with them and uh, you happen to be an organ donor then take you out now that kind of seemed kind of crazy to me because if somebody gonna kill you for your organs like why they just won't kill you and take them right there <laughs> you know like why just cause you're an organ donor does that necessarily mean that they going to be in line to get your organs, you know. So, that's a lot of little questions there. But, hey, um, you'll find that a lot of folk don't have organ donor on their license. That's even why, I like, in the movie Get Out. You know, Get Out, I'm not a big fan of the movie. But, the movie spitting facts in a way. You know, there is supposedly some people that wish that they had um, some of the genes that make black folks so stylish make black folks so big and strong and <laughs> you know and it ain't just from no genes boy they come from hard work in the fields so <laughs> you know so, I used to be I used to be kind of light skinned man to, uh, I spent some time in them fields man you know folk want all the good sides of being black all the style and good looks but they don't want that bad credit though do you <laughs> so, you gonna take that uh, high blood pressure and bad credit you just want the good stuff <laughs> so anyway the organ donor what and you know people assume it's a he but nobody really got any proof you know as far as folks know it could be a she or it could be a group of people you know nobody really exactly know for sure but what would happen is every now and then uh, somebody would come up missing. Now in the streets, people come up missing a lot. 
and a lot of times you know because their family is already so unstable nobody really looks at it like it's a big deal so if your family already unstable and you go missing for a couple of days you know they're gonna think all right he went to his friend house he had his homeboy house or she went to her girlfriend house that she over there with blah 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 he over there. you know nobody really you know just <laughs> go nuts man so i remember uh, even when i was in and you know growing up man uh so i might go to my home uh, my homeboy in that spot and Sue, you know, we'd be over there for, you know, a couple of days, man. And then, like, I remember, man, my, my, shit, one of my boys, man, his name Tone Bone, boy. I don't know who, I don't know nothing about Tone Bone family. <laughs> but I know that man used to be at my crib. Like, it was one summer when we was rapping. And he was over there every day. And just was basically, like, living there, man. I don't know. I, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> my boy doing good now, but I don't know what was going on back then. He was at my crib. So, more than me, boy. We was in there laying down them, them uh, tracks, man. You couldn't tell us we weren't finna be the next dip set. Or the diplomats. For y'all that don't know, that's like a rap, a, rap, uh, a, rap, uh, a rap group from Harlem. Diplomats, Cameron, Jim Jones. Some of y'all might know Jim Jones to be on the reality TV stuff. But anyway, so so because of the way the culture is, nobody freaks out if they folk ain't around or they missing for a little minute. It's just part of the you know, just part of the way things go, man. Hate to say it, but it is what it is, man. So um as time would go by, you know, now once you get to a week, or, you know, you're like, okay, I know they ain't took no underwear, they ain't took no clothes, with them, you know, like, okay, you going for a whole week, what, what's up, something, something ain't right, and, um, you know, that's when they start calling around, asking folks, hey, you seen, you know, JoJo, or you seen, blah, 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 and, uh, now, this is when people start freaking out because it's like, okay, I know they wouldn't just leave. I know they didn't have the money to just leave. You know, a lot of times it's hard to run away and start a new life if you ain't got at least a couple of dollars to get that Greyhound ticket, man. So people will go off and disappear. And um, what will happen over time is they start filing these reports, all these missing people, missing you know, missing men, missing women, missing, uh, usually in, in this case, now in this case, most of the time it'd be people, you know, between like, you know, ages 20, 20 something to, you know, 30 something, because that's, I guess, when people like in their prime peak physical condition, man, and, uh, I hate to say it, but in the streets, you get a lot of young, strong brothers who die in their twenties, and even in their teenage years. You know, you get a lot of strong brothers who die. So a lot of folks say that the violence and stuff, you know, just feed all into this even the more because now they come and um, you know, they just come and grab up. You know, it's like I guess at the funeral parlor because it's, you know, you can go look this stuff up, man. At the funeral places. There's been reports of, you know, people, family members, you know, going in. Like, once you turn them over to the funeral home, you don't know what happens from there. So there's reports that once people have gotten to the funeral home, that people go inside them, take all their organs and stuff out, and sell them. Even though they, you, they didn't have the right to. Now, I don't know how that could be true, because I believe by the time... You get to the funeral home, it they ain't been cold no more. You know, your body been like maybe warmed up, so maybe the insides and that, but I could be wrong. Any of y'all that worked in funeral homes, son, let me know I could be wrong about that. But in order for that plan to work, they would have to keep the body on ice and get the stuff out, close them back up, and then start, you know, making them look ready for them to at a funeral. So, 
when we turn our family members over, we don't know what they're gonna do. And then even when they put in the, put them in the ground, what's to stop them from coming later, late that night? You know, what's gonna stop them from pulling them back up out the ground and doing what they want to do? You know, you know, folk be taking people jewelry and stuff. So what is there to stop them from? You know, so now in the projects, the the benefit that the, this organ donor guy supposedly got uh, is the fact that you don't have a lot of news coverage when I want to say black folk, but I'm not just gonna say black. I'm gonna say people who look down on when they go up missing the folks that society look down on drug dealers like if you you know if the news not gonna make a report saying hey local drug dealer has come up missing or hey uh you know two time a convicted felon has come up missing you're not gonna hear that story you'll hear that they hurt somebody or you'll hear that they had a shootout or you'll hear that they on the loose and you need to you know, hide your kids, hide your wife, but you're not gonna hear all oh, so that type of person is missing. You know, you're not gonna hear a uh, local prostitute is missing and can't be. It's just not. It's just not. You know, like one of my favorite shows is Forensic Files. One thing I noticed about Forensic Files is they only cover like innocent people. I'm not saying that. Um, People that sell drugs and stuff is can't be innocent or can't change or whatever the case may be. But the people that they pick for that show is usually people with a, a like a pristine past. Now I have I think I do remember one episode was a black girl and she went missing, but of course that black girl was underage and she was prostituting herself. So, you know, hey, <laughs> You know, that's another issue for another day. So he was able to, the, the reason why he's able to get away with it for so long, because the project's been around for a long time, bro. Like the projects, um, you know, I don't know if everybody really understand, but they started making projects in like the 40s or 50s or something, man. So the project, they all gone now, but when, you know, they was around for like, from that time all the way up until uh, 2010s, early 2010s, man, so, and that's just for Chicago, I don't know about other cities, man, uh, y'all gotta let me know about other cities, but, um, yeah, but then even, uh, you know, that's just Chicago, man, so. It was they was around for a while and and people don't understand just how big they were how many people bro you talking about thousands and thousands of people man like i gotta really look into that just how many people lived in the projects man the projects was just not like you ever seen like judge dread the movie judge dread they had like the old one sylvester long then they made a new one and they had these big, like, super cities because the world was all tore up. So everybody moved into these big super cities and everything was dirty and grimy and packed to capacity. Like, that's what the projects was, man. It was people packed up just, it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like a prison, man. Like, y'all go look, I'm, I'm going to put some, I'm going to put some images and stuff so y'all can really, you know, see it for y'all who ain't seen it before. So it was just so big and crazy, so intricate, so many levels, so many floors, so many. Like, what could you do? And then, hey, police ain't in no hurry. Police ain't in no hurry to come to Karani Green, man. Police ain't in no hurry to come to, you know, Robert Taylor Holmes. Or, uh, police ain't in no hurry to come to Rockwell, how to be Wells and all that. Police ain't in no hurry to come up in there. And then even if they do come up in there, shoot. Man, look. There's been instances of uh, police. Because you got to think, think, think about the projects. 
you got multiple buildings. Each building got like 20, 30 floors or something like that. 20 floors, 30 floor, whatever, 25, whatever floors. Each building got each floor got like it's like hotels man <laughs> like each floor got multiple units on each floor all in windows so how could the police pull up and go up in a building when all for all they know somebody standing there with a rifle getting ready to blow their head off so you know just that imagine living somewhere like that man imagine having your family somewhere like that and I know a lot of people did, and uh, I'm not knocking them. Right? Like, I'm not saying that they wrong for having their family there because they did what they had to do. You know, shoot, they did what they had to do, man. You know, if I, if things were in such a way that <laughs> me and my wife and my baby had to stay over there, <laughs> I ain't see over there, but we, we on the south side of Atlanta. It's a street called Washington Road. And God be road. There's a couple of there's a couple of little roads that's kind of like notorious for you know being real hood spots, man. If we had to stay over there, we just would have to do what we had to do, man. Cause I'm not gonna let my family be in the street, and I dang sure ain't going <laughs> going back to our mama house, so <laughs> you know. So hey, folk had to do what they had to do, man. I ain't knocking them for that. I'm just saying, imagine being in those shoes. So anyway, it, it went on until one day a story broke on on in the newspaper. Now you might not could get the time on the news, but you could mess around and get the time on the newspaper. So the time got on the story got out on the newspaper about how many homeless people was coming up missing, how many um. How many young folks coming up missing? Even old folks was coming up missing. And it wasn't, it was always the same. You know, they would be out. Either they'd be gone uh, for an extended period of time, or they, you know, went out at night. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm talking about late, late, late night, you know, three, four, when ain't nobody, like around three to four, that's come by when stuff started winding down. Around five or six, you know, that's kind of like when the dope boys go to sleep and the folks who got to go to work start getting up, man, you know. So, just during that little dead period right there. And uh, that's when a lot of this stuff would happen, man. And, uh, you know, and as time went, you know, the social media and internet really helps a lot of stories get out, man. A lot of people started, you know, realizing what was going on and not going out so late at night. And uh, as the projects got towed down, that kept a lot of people out of uh, harm's way. Shoot, just straight up, like you know, it wasn't one as easy as uh, for the so-called organ donor to uh, do his organ stealing, man. Because uh, now you got folk, you know, folk that probably, man. I'm telling y'all, bro, the projects was just it was just like a death trap, man. Like, I don't know if many, I, I never really heard of a case of a fire breaking out in one. I'm sure there was. But man, that mug would be a death trap fire broke off up in there. Ooh, we never thought about that. So yeah, I know a lot of times y'all seen good times and, you know, that's where I kind of was first really learned about the projects was from watching good times, man. And you know it was, it was pretty accurate for the time show, but Good Times didn't really. It was a comedy show, you know. It wasn't like a drama show or nothing, but yeah, it is fair share of drama in there though. So anyway, I just want to let y'all know about that story, man. Um, you know, I've been to, I've been to, through the projects a couple of times, been to the projects a handful of times. And, you know, I didn't really hang out there too much because I'm like, bro, I'm not from here. <laughs> you know, this ain't, uh, you know, I ain't from here, you know, so I don't know who, who, and who do what. All I know is what I heard other folks say. So let me just be passing through, man. I mean, one time, I was stupid as a kid, man. 
remember one time my barber was cutting my hair and I used to get designs cut in my hair and he drew a star in my hair now it's two different stars in Chicago you know you got the five point star and the six point star I ain't gonna tell you what star he put in my head but he put the star in my head I ain't asked him to you know, he do a design, boy, man. But they star in my head, so you know, make it. my barber used to be high, man. Like that's the only time I wanted him to cut my hair when he was high, cause when he wasn't high, man, he'd mess my junk up. <laughs> so I, yeah, when I seen him, when he'd be like, "Hold on, man, let me go smoke real quick," I'd be like, "Go on ahead, man. I'll be right here. I'm chilling." Cause I know he's gonna have me straight when he got a little something in his system, man. So he must have been hiding in the mug that day and put that dang star on my head. Now I'm just, I'm stupid, man. Riding the bus around the city of Chicago with a star on my head. And like, what you gonna say? Somebody say something, what you gonna say? Nah, nah, nah. It's, it's just a haircut. Nah, boy, it ain't just no haircut. People done get hurt for way less than that, man. But you know, man, your boy was blessed growing up, man. You know, God was looking out for me, boy, because I should have been dead a couple of times, should have been hurt a couple of times, and should have been in jail a whole bunch, a lot of times. <laughs> I should have been locked up um, many, many times. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's already looking out for, for a young Negro out there, man. So, you know, that's just how... Uh, that's just how the streets go, bro. That's just how the streets go, man. You don't know which way that junk can take you, man. Could take you to the left, could take you to the right. You know? You don't know, man. It's just blessing when you get up out of it, man. That's why I do hood horror, bro. I do hood horror because, um, uh, it's like, man, could have been me. Could have been me, man. You know, it could have been me on some real stuff, bro. Even like with, um, and, you know, I just always been different, man. Because he coming up, I was, um, I was a smart kid. And I was one of the only kids that had my mama and my daddy in the house. My parents was actually married, man. They weren't just no baby mama, baby daddy situation. They was actually married, so... I think that made a little difference, man. And, uh, and then my daddy side is people who are like hard workers, thinkers. Well, not just everybody got hard work, but they like thinkers and entrepreneurs and, you know, self-employed type folk. So, I don't know. I guess it just rubbed off on me, man. And uh, so I was, you know, a little smarter than the average bear in school, man. You know, I used to be... Uh, you know, I used to, uh, I used to, you know, get A's and stuff, man. Barely would get a B. You know, it'd be a big deal if I got a B, man. And, you know, when you're in the hood, when you're smart, you get picked on. <laughs> More get mad when you smart, man. So, you know, I got picked on like everybody else or whatever it is, what it is. Never had to have a lot of fights, though. You know, I've always been a big, big joker, so. I ain't really have to have a whole lot of fights, man, but, uh, you know, but, um, when I got to high school, just coming up in grammar school, you know, by, I had, I still had friends, you know, you still, cause it's, it's kind of crazy, bro, when you in there, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but it's like this for me and my, 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 my middle brother, you, it's like when you a smart kid or a good kid in school, you seem to become friends with like the roughest Negro walking around in the school, man. I don't know if that's true for all y'all, man, but one of my boys, man, uh, that's my boy right there, man. I think he, uh, I think he locked up last time I heard, man. Uh, I gotta check on him, man. But, uh, yeah, that was my guy, man. He was like, he was older than everybody. And he was the baddest. I remember Jumma walking through there, man. And we got cool. So that's just how it go, man. When you, when you, uh, I don't know. Opposites attract, I guess, man. But by the time I got to high school, man, I started acting a fool, bro. I started acting a fool in high school, man. Uh, Cause when I went to high school, I went to a school that was a school like you had to take a test and be smart to get in. 
And uh, so when I got there, it was like, I'm the big dog now. So I'm a, you know, I'll be in the class. I'm the only black boy in the class, man. Sometimes the only black person in the class, period, man. So I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to run this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got me messed up in here, boy. So I'm run this mug in here. Everybody sit down, watch, pay close attention, so. So, you know, I got mad. I just got messed up, man. And just threw school out the way, man. But that's, you know, I, I ain't mad at it, though, because, uh, I man, I think about what I be doing hood whore, you know, what I be connecting with y'all if I would have, you know, went the traditional route, man. Probably not. Probably been making some money at some big company or whatever. Wouldn't been thinking about doing on YouTube. And probably would have been unhappy than a mug, man. So, you know, I'm happy, man. I accept where things is at. You know, it's a blessing to be able to tell people stories and and get a little pocket change for it, man, you know. Don't get no better than that. So anyway, you know, I used to go to, you know, people always, we having a party, we having a juke party, we call them juke party, we having a juke party, juke party, juke party. And I never liked it, man. I don't know, man. It's just, I guess, I'm telling y'all, when you have both your parents, man, and I'm a, I trip. I ain't saying that without having both your parents, you can't be a critical thinker. But me, it did help me out a lot, man. I know in my case, that's what I'm partly what I attribute it to. Because like my daddy, my daddy always he he didn't listen to just like rap music. My daddy always listened to rock music and stuff like that, man. Rock and dance and pop music and stuff. So when I grew up, like, I'd be hearing that, and it just made me open to different things, man. You know, my mind wasn't just closed to the same box that everybody else's mind was. And I was listening to all rock music and stuff, and pop, and Michael Jackson, and all that, Prince, and that kind of, you know, and until, like, as we got, like, a little bit older, like, my mama was like, y'all need to quit listening to that white people music. Y'all need to listen to this start playing black music. And we started getting more into that. And over time, I kind of had lost the interest. And, in, uh, you know, because daddy won. My man daddy had some issues, so didn't see daddy much as, uh, much as whatever. So we used to. So kind of forgot about the rock music thing, man. And you forget and that's what happened in the streets, man, is you forget who you are. You know, I see so many little kids, man, two and three-year-olds, smart, man, smart. But these same two and three-year-olds is the kids that's growing up killing their classmates. And it's not because they not good people. It's because they forget they forgot that they just a little kid. So they was watching Sesame Street and drawing with crayons. So that's why it's important that the parents don't just expose your kids to all this street stuff, man. It's important for us to remember who we used to be, man. And I remember, I don't know if it's the last time I smoked weed, but I kind of think it was. The last time where I really smoked some weed, it got high for real, for real. At least, you know, it's, I believe so. Well, let me tell you the last time I got drunk first, for real. The last time I got sloppy knockout drunk, me and my, my brother, my, my, you know, my street brother, we was uh, coming, it was New Year's, we was like juniors in high school or something. And it was, uh, we was trying to find somewhere to go. One guy canceled on us, so he was like, let's just go down to Navy Pier. I'm like, that's stupid. We just going to get on the bus and go downtown Chicago to find something to do. I don't know. We ain't had no money. But anyway, stupid stuff, man. Get down, go down to Navy Pier. Run into this girl we know from school. Like crazy, right? And uh, go to the hotel party they was having. 
we going there and me and him went after a bottle of Crown Royale like it did something to us. We got so drunk that I literally fell asleep in the party sitting in the chair. Just knocked out, man. The girl was dancing in front of me and everything. I'm completely knocked out. And he said, now, what I was, so they wake me up. Police are just saying, y'all gotta go. Now, me and my boy walking down to the arm and arm, trying to hold each other up. Teenagers, man. Trying to hold each other up. And uh, downtown Chicago in the middle of the night, we could have ran into anybody. Like, man, we could have ran into some gangsters. We could have ran into some some cops, man. We could have ran into some crackheads that needed a couple of dollars, man. Anything. But we ran into two boys we went to school with again. <laughs> and it's crazy because we went to school. Like, it took us two hours to get to school. So it ain't like we talking about right here in the in our neighborhood. We had to leave from the west side all the way up to the north side, two hour bus ride to get to school. So just the fact we ran into all these different classmates was crazy, man. And they put us on the bus, helped us get on the bus, and we took the bus home. I fell asleep on the bus and then I woke up right when we got to my boy stop we were supposed to get off. And we got off, went to his daddy house. We were so tore up, he was in there talking to his brother. And I'm not lying to you. He was talking to his brother. And in the middle of talking to his brother, telling him what happened, he fell face first on the floor. <laughs> and <laughs> it didn't brace his fall and never stopped talking the whole way down. <laughs> he talked all the way down until he hit the floor and continued to talk. <laughs> and the next day I woke up. And we got a McDouble or something from McDonald's, and I said I was done. I said, I don't like this. I don't like the way this felt. It didn't mean nothing. What was the purpose? Then the last time I got high, you know, it was like I saw the game Rock Band. Because the folk who party with, well, they had a they had the rock band game. And if y'all that don't know, rock band was like, you get a guitar, a plastic guitar, plastic drums, and a microphone. And when you, and on the screen, the screen be going up and down, showing you what buttons to press on the instruments, and the music and the words to the song. And uh, he had the whole wall projector. And it was, the colors was flying, and explosions, and fireworks, and stuff. And... And I saw it and I messed around. I heard maybe a song or two. I heard back from my daddy used to play. I was like, dang. I forgot that I used to like listen to rock back in the day. You know, I forgot about, uh, you know, I forgot that, you know, we used to, yeah, we used to get down with that stuff. And, uh, and it blew my mind because, you know, just you forget, you forget stuff, man. You be the forgot, man. So, um, I was like, man, and I think that was the last time, because I started thinking, like, what is, this ain't, what, this ain't who you is, man, you know, yeah, you might be from the street, you might live on the same block with murderers and drug dealers and whatever, and prostitutes and pimps and you might live on the same block with them folk, but you're not them folk. And then uh, a little bit after that, we ended up moving down to Atlanta. So now, you know, I didn't know nobody, nobody to party with, nobody to kick it with. Probably saved my life. Or at least saved my freedom. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that... Uh, if we'd have stayed in Chicago, man, things wouldn't have been, you know, good like they are. You know, I'm sure things would have been on a whole different, uh, things would have been a whole different ball game, man. So, just doing this to, uh, just get a chance to talk to y'all, man. Get a chance to, uh, you know, Y'all get to hear a little bit about me, especially the folks who knew 
They don't really ain't never had a chance to really hear nothing from me other than stories. So I love y'all, man. I thank y'all for the support, bro. For real, for real.